see, pot scrubbers and cake testers and wisp brooms and then just a couple cute little brooms that you can put on the tree or you can hang up in the kitchen, little kitchen witchens. So that's what we're doing this morning. Let's get started. Okay, so this is my old spindle, so kind of disregard. It is uh, what we started out with, we got better with it. So if it looks bad, it's, it's got a lot of use. <laughs> so the first thing I wanna do is talk to you about, do not, cause it's gonna be a little bit different this time. Well, okay. First thing we need is a jerk string. Okay, you don't want it super long, just an overhand knot. the wind. It's windy today. That's a little bit short, but we're going to do another one just to make sure we've got two sitting here waiting on us. Hmm. And as that phrase out, just an overhand knot. Okay. So now i got two of these waiting on me. That's a better one. What we want to do is we want to make a knot for the hanger. And in order to do that, we're gonna do a little tricksy here. So we need a little bit more um, <clears throat> starting out than we normally do. That's what, about 12 inches. So then we are going to do our knot. So remember that you come over three fingers where it intersects. You hold it, turn it upside down, grab the long string, not the short one, okay? So, and then we're gonna put a uh, as Marlo would call it, a stop knot, right close to it. So that keeps it from oops, getting larger. Okay, and then down here, we're going to do another stop knot. And I'll show you why in just a second. So, two stop knots, one, two, and a loop. Okay. So, the first thing we're going to do is grab some natural broom corn. And for this you need like, because you're going to add on to this, so like one spaghetti serving size. How's that? And we're going to start by putting that over. So usually, I'm right-handed, so I'd have the broom corn to the left, correct? Well, the reason we don't have that today is because we're going to be plating. Now, this is about a healthy spaghetti serving, okay? And I want this more close to the top here. So, first thing I'm going to do is cinch that down. Okay, and it'll spin on you until you start wrapping a little bit. So what we're going to do with this is we are going to put that little loop underneath there and see then we've got a hanging loop. How slick is that? And we're going to wrap for three. Still slipping on me. Okay, and I'm going down for this first row. Okay. So then what I want to do is I want to put some of this cool mixed red and green on the outside. So I'm going to level that up and just let it spread around, making sure that I keep that up. Okay, I'm going to do it again. So these are, because this, this isn't very wide, there doesn't need to be. Um, these aren't real big uh, layers of that. Okay, so I just want to spread that around there. Um, one thing I will tell you, when you're mixing your broom corn, if you layer it, like a little layer of red and a little layer of um, green, and that will uh, mix a little bit better than just plopping them together. See, I don't like that. 
It's okay for today. Alright. So I'm going to wrap for three. And you see that I am wrapping up. And there's a reason for that instead of wrapping down. So I've got three on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of plating with a flat side showing because I'm going to bend them over. All right. They don't need to be in there very far. I do need to have an odd amount. Here's the deal with um, red dyed reed. It does tend to bleed a little bit. <laughs> Look, there's snow coming in the window. I guess I better shut it. <laughs> Hold on. Crazy day today. Thunderstorms, snow, a little bit of everything. Okay, so I'm going to put these in, and I put these in just because I'm really bad at um, getting them done and having an even amount. It has to be odd. So I'll put one in, and then I start adding in twos. And you'll notice that this isn't down very far. It doesn't have to be. Maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch. Okay. The only thing that you need to do at this point is make sure that it is odd. And make sure that you have, don't have a big tail down here because you really don't need it. These guys are long, but I'm going to cut them. And actually what happens a lot when I'm making these is I'll, I'll uh, get them all in there. And I think once I do like five rounds, there's a lot left. So I'll just cut them off and use them on the next one. Okay. And you can see that is like way long. So I'm just going to cut these and use them again. Okay. So, and these are pretty close together. <clears throat> There's another long one, huh? So I'm going to cut him, grab another one. And, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, if I was you, I'm going to have them all cut to length before you started. And I think I did these at like six inches, but that's even long. You won't need that. So maybe four inches. Okay. Those two in there. Probably put two more in there. Move them over a little bit. Can't do one because then it would be even, right? All right, so I'm going up. And the reason I'm going up is because I don't want this to show. So up for three or four, whatever you want to do. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come down. We're going to do an advance down here just for one. And then we're going to start laying these all down in here. How's that? And when I lay those down, I want them all even. So I'm going to make sure that when I press these down, they are, in fact, at the same level. If they're not, then I'll push them down some. So this first row, all we're doing is we are... Pressing these down and making sure that they're all even as we press, okay? Or as even as you can get. Okay, so I've got these all down. It's up a little bit, but it's all right. Okay, and I'm going to try to make them even when I come around here. And I'm going to wrap for three. So, as I come around here, I can see that's my beginning. And I'm going to start braiding or plating. Now, one of the things that I found is 
Yeah, you need to use your finger, but sometimes if you just pull these up just a little bit when you're starting, they really get a lot tighter. So it's over and under, right? And hopefully we've got an odd amount. These are um, dry from yesterday. So we are getting a little bit more wet. And you can see that my braid is on. We're going to do this for about five rows. This is kind of quick and dirty. So I am, because this is so quick and dirty, I'm not going to stop. I'll actually show you the whole process. How's that? So like I say, sometimes with this plating stuff, if you, yeah, you want to use your finger, but if you just lift that up a little bit and then pull, it gets in there tighter. So it's up to you whether you want to mess with that or not. How tight you want your braid. It's just one more little step. You don't have to. So I'm coming around on my third row here. And then I'm going to put my jerk string in here. And um, finish this off and then I'll show you. This one is going to be a pot scrubber. They work really good for cast iron skillets. So I'll show you how I dress it up a little bit with some little holiday flair and the snowflake. And I'll show how I uh, continue using this same uh, bunch of broom corn here to make not only a pot scrubber, but a cake tester as well. So what's a cake tester? You hang them up in your kitchen. You can hang this one up too. Um, and you take uh, one of the, um, well, let's see, you take one of the broom horns here, and then, of course, it's not going to be that long, and you stick it in your cake to see if it's done instead of using a toothpick. There you go. Okay. Renewable. And all. Okay, so I've got like one, two, three, four, and I think that's all I'm going to do. Usually I do about five, but four or five. This really helps you work on your braiding and getting it tight. So I'm coming around here and I can see that's where I started. So this is my fourth one. I'm going to put my jerk string in here. And then I'm going to bit of slack and I'm going to wrap for three. Making sure that I keep it nice and flat so it doesn't get a curl in it or a kink and I can't get it out. About three I think. So I'm going to hold that tension down here. Put that string and then still holding that tension. Come through the loop, grab the tail. Don't let go of your tension. Come over here. Once I have done that, I'm just going to pull tight on something. Cut that off. So you can see that there's a lot left here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these back and I'm going to use them again. Because I don't really need any length here. You could if you wanted to get decorative, but if you're doing a pot scrubber or a uh, cake tester, you really don't need these to be long. So, like I say, I originally cut these like at six inches, but you only really need them about four. Or you can use them like this and use them over again. So I'm going to dump these in the water. Some of them are probably too short, but not all of them. I'm going to dump them in the water and get them soaking. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my handy dandy little rubber band. So this one is going to be a pot scrubber. And I'm actually going to trim that down a little bit because I don't like the way it looks. So I want a pot scrubber to be about six fingers. About right there. So I'm going to come down here. 
Actually, I'm going to trim this up a little bit before I start measuring my six fingers. I don't want to cut that, right, because that's going to hang. So, I like to use an exacto acto knife. Um, I don't have to worry about sharpening them. And that's mostly it. I don't have to worry about sharpening them. So, I'm going to get this over so I don't cut it. And I'm going to trim this down by just applying some pressure. Now, if you had a sander, once you got this cut down, you could run it over the sander and kind of buff that down some, and that, that looks really nice too, but you don't have to. It's one more thing. If you like that, great. And I just cut my string. Don't do that. Okay. That's why you pull it over more. I'll just put a half inch on it, but you don't want to do that. Okay. So, I'm going to give it the two finger test about right there. This is going to be my pot scrubber. And so, you know what I'm going to do on this? I am going to take my um, God, my pruning shears. And I'm just going to cut these. It's a little bit easier to get that done. Okay, there you go. Other than be screwing up and hitting that. Like I say, I will put a knot in that and it'll be just fine. Maybe an overhand knot. That'll work. So, there's your pot scrubber.